Ukraine unleashes a deadly ground combat drone. And I want to be clear, this is not science fiction. This is today, Wednesday, January 07, 2026. A terrifying new weapon has just been officially approved for combat. The entire paradigm of ground warfare is about to be shattered, and you won't believe what this thing can actually do. Look, we're seeing a genuine, massive technological leap in how battles are fought. And it's a shift driven by, you know, the sheer necessity of survival. This isn't just a military news bulletin. It's a critical, high-stakes development that demands your attention. If you support the effort in Ukraine to defend itself, now is the time to hit that like button. It really pushes this critical information to more people who need to see it. And subscribe so you never miss a moment of the defense strategy we analyze here. That headline is uh, sensational, yes. But for once, I think the reality completely justifies the shock. We're not talking about another small aerial drone dropping, you know, light explosives. This is a totally different beast, a hulking, ground-based, highly maneuverable robot. And it's designed for intense close quarters fire support and reconnaissance. The mission, as the Ministry of Defense laid it out, is just. It's incredibly ambitious. They want to drastically reduce personnel losses by replacing human vulnerability with a machine in the absolute worst conditions. We're going to reveal the name of this machine, a name that sounds like it's straight out of myth, and the specific date the Ministry of Defense gave it the final green light. But just understand this first. The front line has just gained an autonomous technological shield one that can handle missions that would otherwise cost dozens of human lives. Okay, let's unpack this. This is where it gets really interesting. The official announcement gives us the name. It's the Zmiya Droid 12.7 Ground Robotic Complex. That name, Zmiya. It translates roughly to dragon or serpent, which just perfectly captures the feel of this thing. It really does. And the official approval, the one that means it's ready to go, it came directly from the Ministry of Defense on Wednesday, January 07, 2026. This isn't a prototype anymore. No, it's fully operational. And what's fascinating and something a lot of people might miss in the initial excitement is that this is a fully domestic Ukrainian development. So built from the ground up for their specific needs. Exactly. Engineered for the brutal terrain and logistical challenges they're facing right now. Yeah. Its core functions are dual purpose, which maximizes its value. It can do deep reconnaissance. Right. Scouting ahead. Scouting in areas way too dangerous for human patrols. And it delivers direct sustained fire support. And that 12.7 in the name. That's the real key to its lethal capability. Hold on. Let's be really clear for anyone who might not track military specs every day. When you say 12.7, what are we talking about? Why is that number so important? That's essential context. The 12.7 refers to the caliber of its main weapon, a 12.7 millimeter heavy machine gun. Okay, so this is not small arms fire. Not at all. We're talking armor piercing, sustained suppressive fire. A 12.7 millimeter round is what NATO would call a $0.50 caliber. It's devastating. It can tear through light armor, destroy unfortified positions, and suppress enemy infantry over huge distances. So putting that on an unmanned mobile platform means they can suddenly project that kind of power into places without risking a human crew. So it's basically a remote-controlled, heavy-duty machine gun nest that can go where people can't. And that approval for operation is the real takeaway, then. It is. It means the system has passed every single test. It meets all the high-pressure requirements of the armed forces of Ukraine. This isn't a concept. The Zmai droid is ready for full integration into combat units right now. To really get why this robotic ground platform, or uh, RGP as we call them, is such a game changer, you have to look past the gun and focus on its mobility. The reports all emphasize it is exceptionally maneuverable. What does that mean in practical terms? Well, it uses these advanced independent track systems that gives it a lower center of gravity, better weight distribution than, say, a wheeled vehicle. And what does that kind of technical edge mean when you're fighting in the worst possible conditions? It means you don't have to stop. On the Eastern Front, operations often just grind to a halt because of the terrain, especially the mud, the Respetitsa, which can immobilize even heavy tanks. Right. This RGP is designed to just push through that. It can maintain speed over broken ground, which lets it bypass defenses, flank positions, or reinforce a spot where other vehicles just can't get to. And the specs are just mind-boggling. This dragon droid, it just scoffs at obstacles. The Ministry of Defense reports say it can handle deep sand, heavy snowdrifts, and get this shallow water obstacles. That detail about water is profound. Really? Why is that? It means the system's completely sealed. It can move across streams, flooded fields, irrigation ditches, things that often define the landscape there. So when you think about the range of conditions they face, from freezing winters to muddy springs, the Zimi droid is effective year-round. It basically makes natural defenses obsolete. So let's talk tactics. We have this 
Advanced weaponized supermobile RGP, beyond just being a remote machine gun, what specific new plays does this enable? It completely changes the risk calculation for the infantry. One perfect job for these platforms is leading a frontal assault or clearing a path through a minefield. Oh, wow. Yeah, instead of sending in human engineers, which is a terrifying, deadly job, the Zomidroid can go first. It can absorb a mine blast with its chassis or just use its cameras to map out the threats, clearing a safe path. It's also perfect for reconnaissance when visibility is low or the threat is high. It becomes the eyes of the unit, saving human soldiers from sniper fire or artillery. Right, which links directly back to the main goal you mentioned. Exactly. The whole point of these robotic complexes is to allow for a drastic reduction in personnel losses. You put the machine in the most dangerous spot, clearing a trench, pushing through contested territory, providing covering fire. And by doing that, you're also increasing the effectiveness of your intelligence gathering and your fire support. It's just a necessary high-tech adaptation to this kind of industrial-scale war. Okay, so this me droid is a massive leap forward. But let's zoom out for a second because this drone, this dragon, is physical proof of something even bigger. And uh, potentially more important, we're talking about an absolutely explosive domestic weapons production boom. The scale of this is almost impossible to wrap your head around. Since the start of Russia's full-scale invasion, production has increased a staggering 35-fold. 25 times. It's an incredible figure. That statistic, reported by Defense Minister Denise Schmeichal back in July, is just astounding. The sheer acceleration is a logistical miracle, and they're not stopping. The plan is to keep increasing that number, to drive toward total self-sufficiency. And the hard data really illustrates that shift toward self-reliance. Mm. Defense Minister Schmeichal stated that an astonishing 76% of the weapons needed for the front are now purchased centrally from Ukrainian manufacturers. 76% purchased domestically, that is a stunning number. But walk us through the why. What huge strategic problem does that solve? It solves two critical problems at once, supply chain resilience and speed of adaptation. When you rely on foreign aid, you're subject to political will, to the procurement schedules of other countries. The logistics are a nightmare. By buying 76% at home, they cut their vulnerability to all of that. And crucially, they accelerate the feedback loop they can get a prototype like this Madroid, test it in actual combat, adjust the design and roll out a new version in weeks, not years. Right. The feedback is instant. Exactly. On top of that, Prime Minister Yulia Sviardenko noted that over half of the weapons currently in service with the Ukrainian Defense Forces are made by Ukrainian companies. This is in future planning. This is the reality on the ground today. And the pace of innovation itself is just breakneck. Last year alone, the Ministry of Defense approved over 1,300 new models of domestically produced weapons and equipment. 1,300. That's a 25% increase compared to the previous year. You don't get that many new models approved unless your development pipeline is just wide open and moving at an incredible speed. And that number, 1,300, it highlights a key strategic choice. They're prioritizing rapid adaptation over strict standardization. The goal seems to be to overwhelm the adversary with constant innovation. If a specific drone or shell proves effective, they can rapidly approve it and scale up production, forcing the enemy to constantly adapt to new threats. The Zmi droid is just the most visible tip of a very, very large iceberg. So the Zmi droid is out there now, but what's next? What's the roadmap for this expanding arsenal? Colonel Andrei Zaravlov, he's the Deputy Chief of Staff of the Rocket Forces and Artillery Command, he's been pretty open about the immediate roadmap. He announced that the military will soon receive new equipment with a heavy focus on two areas, modern unmanned systems, continuing the trend of the Zmi droid, and new domestically produced artillery. And the artillery developments are incredibly promising. We're seeing powerful new systems and testing right now that could immediately impact the front. He specifically named the 155mm Marka towed gun. Yes, and that one has a barrel length of 39 calibers. Why is that detail, 39 calibers, important? That tells you about the design philosophy. With artillery, barrel length is a trade-off. A longer barrel, say 52 calibers, gives you maximum range. But it's heavy, bulky, hard to move quickly. A 39 caliber barrel, like the Marta has, shows they're prioritizing mobility and a higher rate of fire over raw maximum range. It's an artillery piece designed for quick deployment and rapid fire support, which is perfect for the kind of dynamic war they're fighting. So they're building for speed and resilience, not just pure power. And there's another key asset in testing too, right? That's right. A new 105 millimeter towed artillery system. The 105 millimeter gun is the definition of lightweight, portable artillery. 
It's often used by rapid reaction forces. So this suggests a focus on equipping smaller mobile infantry units with their own quick response to fire support. It fills a really vital gap. So if we tie this all together, the Zmaya droid, the 35-fold production increase, the 76% domestic purchasing, these new artillery systems. It underscores a profound strategic shift. They are committed to leveraging technology and ensuring their units are adapting faster than ever before, all through their own industrial capacity. It's a technological race against time, and they appear to be accelerating their development cycle dramatically. So, to synthesize all of this for you, the approval of the Zmady Droid 12.7 is so much more than a story about one new robot. Much more. It's direct confirmation that the national goal of drastically increasing domestic production, everything from advanced artillery to these terrifying unmanned ground systems, is not just some political promise. It's happening at a record-breaking pace. And consider this. If a nation can increase its arms production by 35-fold and deploy highly effective ground robots like the Zmedi Droid 12.7 in the middle of a brutal, active conflict, what will the face of warfare look like just one year from today? The machines are here. They are fully operational, and they are changing everything. That's something to really think about. You've been listening to J&J's Military Report, where we analyze the latest in military strategy, global defense, and advanced weaponry. We'll catch you next time.